Hi guys, just wanted to do a video here about one of the greatest business owners of all time, Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, one of the largest retailers in the world. Started as a, as a five and dime store, so a small business is how they started, and grew it to become the largest employer in the world at one time, the largest retailer in the world, and his family, if they were all combined in, in wealth, would be still today the wealthiest person alive. You know, when he was alive, he had stock options for all of his children and his wife, and they all had very, very significant wealth holdings. A very, very successful business, employed more than a million people at one stage. I mean, just think about those sheer numbers. Grew throughout the world and continues to be a very, very successful business. Walmart, for those of you that don't know, is a consumer goods retailer. They sell everything from homewares to food. They also own a business called Sam's Club, which is a warehouse membership club retail concept. But their original concept, still called Walmart today, was the first big box, I guess, you know, saving, you know, department store in the world. And interestingly, Target was set up at a, in the same year on the other side of the country, but Walmart set up in Arkansas, where I have been to their global headquarters. I have met with the team of Walmart. I have, I've actually met with one of the former CEOs. It was a privilege getting a tour of, uh, of Walmart HQ and being in Bentonville and Little Rock, Arkansas. It's a fantastic place and a real American success story. So I wanted to bring you today some of Sam's rules for success. I think they're very, very good for all business owners and for anyone contemplating business ownership, it's something to think about. Rule number one is to commit to your business. Believe it more than anybody else does. This is very important. You've almost got to be a nutcase about your business. You really have to show passion and drive and your personal shortcomings can be overcome by the passion that you bring to your work. I don't know if you're born with it. You know, even Sam said he didn't know whether he kind of learned it or he was born with it. But indeed, it's something that you need to run a business like Walmart or to build a business of any significance. So commit to your business and believe in it more than anyone else. As Sam says, pretty soon, if it's a passion that you hold very dearly, everyone will catch it from you almost like a fever. So do not be afraid to have that commitment and passion. The rule number two is to share all your profits with your associates and treat them as partners. This is one of Sam's very important rules. You know, if you treat them like a partner, they'll treat you like a partner. And together, you'll all perform beyond your wildest expectations. So reading straight off Sam's, remain a corporation and retain control if you like, but behave as a servant leader in a partnership. So encourage your associates to hold a stake in your company. I think that's a great insight there from Sam Walton because we often do see business owners don't necessarily have that, I guess, forethought to include people and understand that if it's a dream for many, it becomes a bigger dream for one. So no, rule number three is to motivate. Motivate your partners. Money and ownership alone are not enough. So he, he says constantly, day by day, think of new and interesting ways to motivate them. Set high goals, encourage competition, keep score, make bets with outrageous payoffs. If things get stale, cross-pollinate. Have managers switch jobs with one another. Keep everybody guessing as to what your next trick is going to be. Don't become too predictable. That's how he says that we should motivate. Number four, rule number four, communicate. Communicate everything you possibly can to your partners. Now, just so you know, he doesn't call them employees. He calls them partners. That shows you the way that he thinks about employees. He says that the more they know, the more they'll understand. The more they understand, the more they'll care. Once they care, there's no stopping them. If you don't trust your associates to know what's going on, they'll know you don't really consider them partners. And information is power. The gain you get from empowering your associates more than offsets the risk of informing your competitors. Number five is appreciate. Actually, just, just there on the communicate one, I had the benefit of meeting Sam Walton's formal videographer. He would follow Sam around in his plane as he flew into different stores. And he told me that he became so good and, and spent so much time with Sam Walton that he often realized what he was doing when he was going to stores. He was doing store visits to, to understand whether his business was in check and the stores were being run effectively and the manager of that store was doing a good job. And he said that he would call the store, Sam Walton would call the store and say, 
I'm coming to this store today. And then they would get in the plane and fly over and, and visit the store. And this videographer said to him, I, I, I don't understand why you call them and let them know. We should be springing them. We should be surprising them. You know, he had, being a videographer, he had some sort of undercover boss vibes even back then. And Sam corrected him. And he said, well, no, first of all, they're a partner of mine. Secondly, I'm getting them to fix it twice. Firstly, I'm letting them know I'm coming. So if they want to fix anything before I get there, the store will be improved. Once I've seen it, if I have any suggestions, I can then make suggestions and then the store will be improved again. So I'm getting closer to the end result of having a perfect looking store as opposed to springing them and trying to catch them out and playing all those games. I thought that was very insightful and, and very, very true. Number five, rule number five, appreciate. Appreciate everything your associates do for the business. You know, he said, a paycheck and a stock option will buy one kind of loyalty, but all of us like to be told how much somebody appreciates what we do. We like to hear it often, and especially when we have done something we're really proud of. Nothing else can substitute for a few well-chosen, well-timed, sincere words of praise. They're absolutely free and they're worth a fortune. Wise words there from Sam Walton. Number six, rule number six is to celebrate. Celebrate your success and find some humor in your failures. He said, don't take yourself so seriously. Loosen up, everybody around you will loosen up. Have fun, show enthusiasm. When all else fails, put on a costume and sing a silly song. There might be footage on YouTube of Sam Walton doing this. He has done this in the past. You know, he was basically about doing stunts and doing things that created fun and was celebratory. And he wanted people to, to underestimate. He wanted his competition. He wanted Wall Street. He wanted everyone to underestimate Walmart and think that they were kind of, you know, just from Arkansas and why should we take these cornballs seriously? So it was, it was a great tactic. Number seven is to listen. Rule number seven, he said, listen to everyone in your company. Figure out ways to get them talking. Talking to you, talking to each other, talking on the front lines. They're the only ones that really know what's going on in your business. So you better find a way that they can communicate that back. And he said that's what total quality is all about. To push responsibility down and to force good ideas to bubble up. You must listen to what your associates are trying to tell you. Rule number eight is to exceed. Exceed your customers' expectations. If you do, they'll come back over and over. Give them what they want and a little more. Let them know you appreciate them. Make good on all your mistakes and don't make excuses. Apologize. Stand behind everything you do. The two most important words Sam Walton said that he ever wrote were on a Walmart sign that said, satisfaction guaranteed. It's still their motto today, and they make all the difference. I do have a little story for you that when you go to the Walmart Museum in Arkansas, they have a very interesting cabinet display of all the items that Walmart had refunded but never sold. So his associates and partners took this so seriously, this idea of satisfaction guarantee, that people would bring in items, and there were very funny things there, like a drill which at the time they didn't sell. They had some golf equipment. As long as I know, from the time I visited, I was told by the museum curator they had never sold golf equipment by that stage. You know, they had magazines, they had, you know, food, they had a tennis racket that they'd never sold. So they had this display of items that associates had returned and refunded, but were never sold at Walmart, which means that they had given money back to the customer just to keep them happy, just to make them happy with their visit to Walmart. It says a lot about an organization that they made a shrine to that in their museum. We're talking about one of the most successful companies in the world. They had a Wall Street run like no other company. If you go and look at their stock price, it made many, many people wealthy. And they are all over the world they're wildly successful. It's a multi-billion dollar company. And in their museum is a shrine to how they kept their customers happy by returning simple household items. I think it says a lot for the type of company that Walmart was, is, and hopefully continues to be. Rule number nine from Sam Walton, control. Control your expenses better than your competition. This is where you can always find the competitive advantage. You know, Sam said that for 25 years running, Long before, before Walmart was known as the nation's largest retailer, they ranked number one in the industry for the lowest ratio of expenses to sales. So he made a lot of difference with running an efficient operation. And he was really, really good at that. 
He also said, you can be a brilliant business person, but you'll go out of business if you're too inefficient. Walmart created many, many industries. It's not just a retail business. They are the largest trucking business in the United States. So when he talks about efficiencies, they decided that in order to be better at that, in order to control costs, in order to drive profit up and drive expenses down, they were going to get into the logistics and trucking business. And when they did, they did it better than anyone else. So this is a significant business. This is a significant, I think, point for all of the businesses. You know, just a small example about expenses. One of the tells that I always have when you go to a well-run hospitality restaurant is if you ask them, a cafe, a restaurant, when you ask them for some sauce, you might ask them for tomato sauce, chili flakes, I don't know, something of that nature, some skim milk for your coffee. And if they give you so much more than you could possibly consume, I went somewhere today and I asked for some chili sauce and I got, I got enough chili sauce for the month. And I know they have to throw that out. So there's a lack of checks and balances in place in that cafe that I went to today, serving me what is a free item. I didn't get charged for the sauce. That's straight off the owner's bottom line and straight in the bin after I've eaten as much of it as I could. So control is very important, and, and this does apply to everyday smaller businesses. It's not just a large business like, like Walmart. Rule number 10, one of my favorites, is to swim. And what he says is, swim upstream, go the other way. So directly in his words, ignore conventional wisdom. If everybody else is doing it one way, there's a good chance you can find your niche by going in exactly the opposite direction. Be prepared for a lot of folks to wave you down and tell you you're, you're headed the wrong way. He said, I guess in all my years, what I heard more than anything was a town of less than 50,000 population cannot support a discount store for very long. That's what he was told. And we've seen how wrong that was. We've seen how right he was. And he used these 10 rules of success to build the world's largest and most successful retailer in history. You know, a successful guy, a humble guy, and someone I think we can learn a lot from. Thanks, guys.